tonight we're going on a little bit of an adventure. We're going to China tonight because tonight's review is of The Painted Veil and it came out in 1934 and it stars the great Greta Garbo. And I have to admit, as I did in my Camille review of her years ago, I haven't seen too many Greta Garbo movies. And interestingly enough, there aren't that many Greta Garbo films since she stopped acting in the early 40s, but I digress. It stars Greta Garbo and Herbert Marshall, who he's been in countless of my reviews and he's bound to be in countless more <laughs> because he just happens to be in so many movies that I have interest in seeing. And also George Brent, who I've talked about George Brent before in the past, but George Brent is definitely in my top 10 favorite actors of all time from back in the day. Uh, he's one of those actors who not too many people are aware of him, but those who are aware of George Brent love him in anything he's in. But interestingly enough, George Brent was a little bit of a scumbag in this movie, but we'll get to that. So Greta Garbo, or before I get to the plot, let me just mention that this is an MGM film and I would categorize it as a romance drama. And it was directed by Richard Bolislawski. You try saying that. <laughs> but he was a Polish director and he would, uh, I believe a couple years after this, go on to make The Great Le Miserable with Charles Lawton, which is that's that's one of my favorite movies of all time so this this movie is based off a book by the great Somerset uh, mom and Somerset mom he has he wrote so many great books from back in that era and so many movies were made off of his books just to name a few of human bondage um, let's see what's uh, the Letter, which, spoiler for people who've been watching my channel a lot, The Letter is my next, well, <laughs> my review that's going to come out at some point with Betty Davis. Didn't like that movie too much, but we'll, we'll get to that in that review. And also The Moon and Sixpence, which I watched the other night. The Moon and Sixpence is, to me, it's uh, one of my favorite movies of all time from back then. It's just beautifully filmed. But I don't want to review that until I have the, the right materials to review that. But anyway, so it's written by Somerset Mom, a uh, famous story. But I want, I want to note that this movie sort of started out very slow. And I'd say the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, which this scene, funny enough, was at the start. It was very slow. It didn't really captivate me. I was sort of just kind of like, okay, when's the movie going to start? But <laughs> the movie doesn't really start until they go to China because uh, Greta Garbo, she plays this Austrian girl who's not married but really wants to see the world. And Herbert Marshall, you sort of get the sense that he's clumsy and just not that attractive. Herbert Marshall <laughs> always plays the character where he's like, he's like, he gets cheated on, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Like, the girl doesn't really want to be with Herbert Marshall. She wants to be with the more attractive guy like George Brent. So she marries Herbert Marshall and they decide to move to China to help with the the plague that's going on there, the cholera plague. And uh, once they move over there, of course, <laughs> he's Herbert Marshall. He's just, he, he worships his wife in like a lot of the, his movies. He's like, oh, my love, my love. You know, you are the light of my life, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's He kind of suffocates his women with love, I would say. But so they land and right away she sees George Brent. And I wasn't expecting George Brent to come on so strong to Greta Garbo, <laughs> but he does. And he's married too. So eventually um, he, you know, makes a move on her. He, he kisses her and she wasn't expecting it. And you can see the fear in Greta Garbo's face when he does it. 
because I mean if you're married especially back then and something like that happens it's like a catastrophe but she falls in love very quickly with George Brent love if you want to call it that um, it's more lust I would say but I want to note this scene where uh, they go to a sort of parade or some sort of Chinese New Year or festival type thing because the setting in this movie was just fantastic. I, I really got the feeling that they filmed this in China, but I'm sure they didn't. But there were a lot of uh, scenes of China, like real footage of China, and apparently the footage that had been used for this also was used in Paul Muni's The Good Earth a few years later. So the setting was great, the festival was great, the costumes of the Chinese dancers and performers was was beautiful. But I want to also really note the scene where <laughs> Herbert Marshall, he comes home early and he sees a white. See, that's why I'm wearing this white jacket. So it's sort of like what Herbert or it's sort of like what uh, George Brent wears in the movie, but he sees a white hat next to their bedroom. And I just thought that was really sort of ahead of his time because it's kind of assumed and the door was locked to their bedroom so it's assumed that you know his wife was getting it on with uh, <laughs> with George Brent so I just want to note that little scene um, but also note the scene where he Herbert Marshall comes to dinner and you can just feel the tension like Herbert Marshall played it perfect he, I mean he's had a lot of practice because he plays that role a lot but he's just like, he's bottling it up inside. He wants to come out and be like, I know you've cheated on me. And that's a great scene. And then he basically says, you're coming with me. She says, no. And then she goes to see her lover, George Brent. And this is when she sees George Brent's true colors because he's just like, well, if you want me, I mean, if you want me to throw my life away, I, I've worked my whole life to get this position, I'll get a divorce, and you can just, I feel like we've all been in relationships like that where it just feels like you love the person so much more than they're willing to give back to you, like they don't love you, you're not on the same page, and you just see that in her face, she's just realizing, oh my gosh, what have I done? this guy he is not in love with me so she goes on with Herbert Marshall to combat the cholera ep epidemic in China and <laughs> I want to note that uh, <laughs> that Greta Garbo is just perfect at looking miserable her face she just looks so depressed they're in a miserable part of the country she doesn't want to be there and she really looks depressed like I mean we've all had that sentiment of not of being really feeling down about life because of a breakup and then she's thrown into a epidemic with her husband who she doesn't love and she just looks miserable so pay attention to that uh, she's the queen of looking miserable is what I wrote um, <laughs> Uh, I, I will say I did like the ending because uh, more than anything in the movie because um, spoiler because she through battling the epidemic with her husband she just not doing really anything until the end but she finds a new respect and love for Herbert Marshall because she sees his work ethic and how he's just helping all these people and I, I thought that the movie did a really good job at showing that humans were not perfect you know <laughs> some people cheat and love isn't always perfect it doesn't start right away but she I, I really like that about the film but the movie made me think because personally I could never forgive never forgive someone who cheated on me Herbert Marshall, of course, is more forgiving, but uh, the movie did make me think, um, and the characters in this movie felt real to me, like, whether it was Garbo looking depressed after a breakup, or George Brent being a slimeball who got what he wanted and is now not really in love with her, 
or Herbert Marshall who's just like super jealous because his wife cheated but the characters just felt so real I, th I thought the movie did great at that um, but I am gonna give this movie only a two and a half stars because other than <laughs> the characters I, I just didn't think the movie was all that memorable it, it wasn't that great um, but it's it's worth two and a half stars and the movie made a profit of 138,000 back then. It it did much better in Europe, specifically in the United Kingdom. Didn't do too great in the U.S., but it did make a profit. Um, I do have this amazing photo from the film that I want to show you all of Herbert Marshall talking with her. Like I said, this was at the start of the movie. I love that. I love when these books have a full spread photo. And I have another photo of Garbo. That's towards the end. And just a little quick thing that I read about Garbo is that this is from a photographer from back in the day. He said, there are virtually no modern dress photographs of Greta Garbo between 1934, which is when this movie came out, and 1939, since she did only period dramas during this time and allowed herself to be photographed only in costumes from these films, something that distanced her even further from her diminishing American public. While other great stars of the 30s may have had the same rights and privileges accorded Gar had the same rights and privileges accorded Garbo by her studio, of course MGM had no choice with Garbo since suspension didn't frighten her. Um, Greta Garbo, very interesting character in Hollywood history. I won't go down that rabbit hole, but very strange, but interesting person to watch especially for movies back then but that's going to be it for tonight thinking about getting back on the clark gable train after watching this but <laughs> we'll see where the channel takes us have a good night everyone